Let's make history. For almost the entirety of America's existence, there's been this battle between should we have a strong centralized government or a state-based government? Leaving the power to the states. This goes back to Hamilton and Jefferson, that classic argument. At no point in time was this more evident than, or more highlighted than after the American Revolution in the 1780s, you had one organization who sprang up which consisted of the elite from New York City and the elite from rural New York upstate. And they had a merger and they got together and supported this organization, the Society of the Cincinnati, which were old officers that fought on the side of the Continental Army in the revolution. By the way, uh, the city of Cincinnati was named after them, but that's a topic for another discussion. And so, to counter that, you had the middle classers uh, who got together and they formed an organization called the Society of St. Tammany. And this was formed in response to the Society of the Cincinnati. Basically, it was your classic war. Society of Cincinnati supported a more centralized government and the Society of St. Tammany, which would become Tammany Hall, supported more state-based government. They were also uh, uh, pro-slavery, oddly enough, and anti-civil rights, and they were, uh, and they wanted an anti-bank economy. So, as the 1800s rolled around, people started to complain because the society of St. Tammany was getting more and more involved in politics. And it was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This is a benevolent society. Like, how did they become a driving force in politics? Well, they forget they kind of was created with that aim in mind, but they went more in that direction. Then in ninth, sorry, in 1836, in 1836, you actually had a Tammany Hall politician who became president of the United States. And that was Martin Van Buren, who was handpicked by Andrew Jackson himself, old hickory. But what really, really made Tammany Hall a force to be reckoned with in New York City politics was due to three reasons. And this happened all in the middle of the 19th century, in the 1850s. First thing you had was one of the most notorious, William Boss Swede. He became a congressman in New York. And he was corrupt as corrupt can be. Most notable of Tammany Hall leaders was Boss Tweed who first served as a U.S. congressman representing New York's 5th District when he took office in March of 1853. At the height of his corrupt influence, Tweed was the third largest landowner in New York City, holding directorships with the Erie Railroad, the 10th National Bank, the Harlem Gaslight Company, and more. His reign over New York politics unraveled in 1877, when he was convicted for stealing an amount estimated by an alderman's committee at between 25 and 45 million dollars, while later estimates ranged as high as 200 million. Unable to make bail, he escaped jail once but was swiftly returned to custody. He died in the Ludlow Street Jail on April 12, 1878, at 55 years of age. Reform political parties periodically took power away from the Tammany Hall crowd, but for many years it always made a comeback. Then you had Fernando Wood, another Tammany Hall politician who became the mayor of New York City. He would win several mayoral elections after this, by the way, but he first got in in around 1854 
And uh, he was a really clever guy because the third thing that happened was that you had the Irish potato famine. So you already had Irish and other European immigrants flooding into New York City. But once the Irish potato famine really kicked off, you had floods of Irish coming in, probably triple the amount, quadruple the amount. And the society of St. Tammany, Tammany Hall, originally because they emphasized uh, members being born in the United States, on United States soil. They were, uh, that's why the, the, the name Tammany is actually named after a Native American chief who was a Lenape Native American, a respected chief. And all their titles and rankings were Native American terminology. And that was because they stressed the native aspect of their organization, people born right here in the United States. So naturally, that spawned a rivalry with the newly coming immigrants, particularly the Irish, because they came in higher numbers than anyone else because of the potato famine. Uh, but their numbers increased so much that Tammany Hall, from a, from a strategic, pardon me, from a strategic perspective, Tammany Hall had to embrace them. And they started forming uh, small factions attempting to get into the political arena, the Irish. So they embraced them. And the wild part about that is that they embraced the Irish immigrants we looked down on initially. And eventually, the Irish wound up taking over the whole institution of Tammany Hall. And it became a major vehicle, not just in assimilating the newly arrived Irish, but also helping them to rise to power within politics in New York City and ultimately in the whole United States. So, Fernando Wood, cunning guy, what he did was he began to organize these immigrants into gangs. And if you want to see anything else on this, you can check out the movie Gangs of New York. I mentioned that many times, uh, the movie Gangs of New York starring Leonardo DiCaprio. They take a shot at uh, depicting this. So Fernando Wood, not only did he organize the immigrants into gangs, but he also created a network, a web of wards and precincts throughout the city. A ward is essentially the smallest political unit you can have as far as uh, geography. And you have precincts, you have districts, so forth and so on. So what he did was he placed about two representatives, Tammany Hall uh, representatives in each ward and they would meet regularly and do political favors for each other, including <laughs> illegally manipulating elections. So as this thing steamrolled into the 20th century, became more and more corrupt. And basically it was just a, 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 a criminal enterprise under the guise of politics. As that was going on, you had a German American cartoonist named Thomas Nass. And he played a big role in this. I don't know if he gets the credit he deserves, <laughs> like FDR and LaGuardia, but... See, the fascinating thing was that during this period, many people were illiterate. We take, a, we take for granted now that most people can read. When we do come across a person every now and then who can't read, it's like, it's kind of shocking. But you gotta remember, during this period, most people couldn't read especially people in the lower strata of society especially a lot of these immigrants as well could barely speak english learning how to speak english so they were illiterate so the main back then we're talking before instagram before youtube before podcast so the world uh tensions around the whole world especially in the united states and new york city was heating up so the yearn to to be informed on what's going on increased so if you couldn't read how are you going to get that information one way was somebody like thomas nass 
who did these these caricature style cartoons and it was depicting and illustrating as plain as day the corruption that was going on within Tammany Hall but he did it the same way he tried to do was the same way someone would write an article about it he going to do that by the illustration now you go to uh the Great Depression and the administration of FDR now FDR was Democrat just like the uh just like Tammany Hall but for whatever reason they did not support FDR in the election so he's like oh yeah really okay I'll remember that <laughs> and when he got elected he demoted their status from a city wide organization to a county organization Mayor LaGuardia and he weakened Tammany Hall even further and that's why to this day a lot of things in New York City are named after LaGuardia not, not just LaGuardia Airport by the way you know my neighborhood he's hauling at several things because uh, LaGuardia was um, he was a supporter of and an advocate for the Italian immigrants who was flooding into my neighborhood before it was Spanish Harlem it was Italian Harlem you can check out my video on the history of uh, Spanish Harlem uh, LaGuardia went out to clean this thing up and the final nail in the coffin was Mayor Lindsay who I believe he went he became mayor in the late 1960s and uh, he left Gracie Mansion in about 73 and he was another mayor who uh, was a strong advocate of reform and at that point the late 60s even you could say early 70s was the end of Tammany Hall and the rest is history Leave your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button.